Right, hello again. I've done a quick rinse out. We're on to the third of the three that Quint of Well Age got sent to me. Um, and I'm just going to quickly go through the third one and um, then I can upload the first video that I've done because it needs to be up like now. Um, so, this particular one is a bourbon and hopefully I can then carry on my run of bourbons that I was intending to do before I just did two scotch. Um, so, this particular one which is this from Quint, thanks very much, is uh, Four Roses uh, Kentucky Bourbon. Now, interestingly, this is Kentucky Bourbon rather than K Kentucky Straight Bourbon. So in here is probably whiskies that are less than three years old because it's got to be over three years old before you can call it Straight Bourbon. 40%, um, uh, this is what the bottle looks like ordinarily. Um, in the UK, you're looking at about £20 a bottle for this, which for a bourbon is actually a pretty good price because um, bourbon tends to get a bit of a premium price simply because of, um, obviously, you know, you've got to get it from America to here. Now, the yellow label is their standard bottling, and they've got some small batch and some aged versions as well, but this is the one that you'll tend to find in most places. Um, I actually found this once in Tesco's for eight quid a bottle. Um, which was just a ridiculous price. Um, I think I picked up two bottles myself um, and there weren't any more when I went back the following day. I think they were clearing it out or discontinuing or something like that. I've seen it back in subsequently. So it was either somebody had cocked up on the pricing or they were doing like a discontinuation and they went, oh, we've sold a lot of this, we need to get it back in. Well, at eight pound a bottle, you are gonna sell a lot of it because it was pretty decent stuff, or it was when I had it then. Um, so Four Roses, is, there's a bit of a mystery as to um, actually the, the, the history behind the, um, uh, the, the brand itself. Uh, currently it's owned by uh, the Japanese company Kirin, who um, you've probably heard of Kirin Beer. Now there is a, there is a story going around that um, Four Roses was created by a gentleman called Rufus Mathewson Rose and Four Roses is named after him, his brother, which is apparently or Oregon, um, and their two sons, so Four Roses, the, the Four Roses of, of that family. Um, however, Kirin themselves, in their website and everything like that, don't make any mention of uh, the Roses, for the Rufus Rose, anybody like that. Um, and they actually um, say it was, uh, a name, the name was trademarked by a guy called Paul Jones Jr. in 1888. Just down here, but don't tell anyone. Um, so yeah, so um, the distillery itself is in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, which is here, um, and it was built in 1910. So obviously the name was trademarked before the distillery was built. So up to that point, it was probably a case of he would, they were actually um, kind of buying stock from other distilleries or maybe doing something a bit naughty. Who knows? Um, but the the distillery itself that is now um, now the standing was built in 1910. So uh, the company itself was then bought by Seagram in 1943. Now Seagram were, were workers, they are no longer, but they were a massive drinks company, kind of like the Diageo of that time. And in the late 1950s, um, they realized that there was actually a massive market for them in Europe and um, also partly in Japan as well, but mainly in Europe. So what they did was they actually stopped selling Four Roses bourbon in America and shipped everything over to Europe. But they then made another spirit called Four Roses, which wasn't actually bourbon. The, the vast majority of it was like a neutral, um, like a neutral grain spirit, um, kind of like a basis of vodka or gin, or mainly vodka, that sort of thing. And then kind of elements added in to make it like a bourbon, but not an actual bourbon and nothing like what their, their actual proper bourbon was. They did this until the company, until Kirin bought the company in 2002. So for like nearly 50 years, yeah, near, near enough 50 years, the Four Roses that you could get in America wasn't actual bourbon and wasn't anything like the proper bourbon that they were selling overseas. So it was only in 2002 when Kirin took over and went, no, 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 this is ridiculous. We're actually going to, you know, we're going to um, bring the bourbon back as it were. And it came back into the, into the US properly. Um, that I I found personally that now and again talking about um, Four Roses kind of online you know on Facebook groups and things like that there are still some Americans that associate Four Roses with the kind of the non-bourbon crappy spirity based thing you know that they were uh, launching back then 
and they've still got it in their head that this is what Four Roses tastes like. They would never touch it again because the stuff that they used to have was absolutely awful and they won't actually give this stuff a chance. So it's um, it's a really strange sort of marketing choice where you know the country that is made can't actually get the core spirit because they're determined that they're going to sell it overseas. So the yellow label was actually a, originally um, a entry level bourbon that was for Europe and Japan, but um, you know until sort of let's say sort of mid two thousands to two thousand and ten, um, mid noughties do we? I don't like that term, but yeah, the mid noughties was when it came back into the US. So quite looking forward to this because I can remember even at eight pound a bottle it was an absolute bargain I'm hoping that it's still good um, because it's been a while since I've had it now that nose is awesome it's really toffee but it's almost a slightly burnt toffee as well what I don't know is also what the constituent parts of this in terms of corn to rye to anything else um, Obviously, it has to be over 50% 50, 50 corn uh, to be called bourbon, but we know there's some younger stuff in there than three years old because it has to be aged for over three years to be called straight bourbon, and this is just Kentucky bourbon. But I love that that nose, that kind of sugary, toffee, slightly burnt sugar, almost like the top of a creme brulee. Lovely sort of rich sweetness to it. It's lighter on the palate than it is on the nose. The nose is really rich and really full on. And the palate is a lot lighter. It's very smooth, there's very little bite to it. To be honest, the finish is a little bit thin. There's not a great deal to it. I think, probably, I was really rating this because of the price. I think for the price point, and I'll be honest, 20 quid. 20 quid for a bourbon in the UK is actually a good price for a cheap bourbon. And in all honesty, I would still rather have this than Jack Daniels, probably Jim Beam. There's a little bit more to this than there is to the standard Jim Beam White Label. Jim Beam White Label doesn't have an awful lot to it as well. You could probably find Beam for slightly cheaper, but this has got a little bit more character to it. But it's, we're talking that level of bourbon. We're talking Jim Beam, Jack Daniels. It's very, very easy drinking. There's not a huge amount to it. There is some character to that. There is, uh, again, that kind of um, sweet, raisiny, Christmas cakiness that you tend to get with a lot of bourbons. But there's not a great deal of depth. There is very, very little on the finish, to be perfectly honest. And it's a fair price, I think. I think eight pound, freaking bargain. 15 quid, very good price. 20 quid, pushing it slightly, to be honest particularly when you can find something like Jim Beam for about 15 quid. That is that is a comparison to Jim Beam. Um, you could put the two side by side, there would be differences between them, and I think that Four Roses would probably have the edge. But we're not talking anything better than that. We're not talking like a deluxe bourbon or anything, although Jim Beam would probably like to think they're a deluxe bourbon. Um, it's an easy drinking, light, cheap, entry level bourbon. There's nothing wrong with it, to be honest. There are entry level bourbons out there, and I've had them back in the past which are really not very good at all. That's a good a good goer. You know, that's that's a good one to say, right, I'm gonna have it in my liquor cabinet and I'm gonna have it if people want to mix or if somebody wants a bourbon but I don't really like them so I don't really want to give them my good stuff but I don't want to offend them either. You know, my boss is coming around and he says he likes bourbon but um, I don't want to give him my good stuff because he's my boss and he's a dick, but I don't want to give him something really crap because I don't want him to think, God, that, that guy's got a really awful taste in bourbon. That's exactly what that's for. Uh, you know, it does the job. It does exactly what you would want from a, a cheap bourbon. It would mix well. It drinks well neat. It would be fine out the fridge. If you want to put ice in it, put ice in it just to take the edge off if, if that's what you want. To be honest, I like it. I, th I, st I think it's good. I think it's good value for money. I think 20 quid's maybe pushing it a little bit, but I think it does exactly what it says on the tin in terms of, it doesn't have an age statement on it. It's bourbon, it's not straight bourbon, so it's got some young bourbon in there. It's on the cheaper end of the scale of bourbons, particularly in the UK, but it's got 
flavours of bourbon that you would want. It's not harsh, it's not rough, it's not thin and wishy-washy. It doesn't have a huge amount of finish, but then I wouldn't really expect it for that kind of level of bourbon that we're looking at. Got to be realistic about this. It's not got ideas of overstation. It's a bourbon for people to drink and enjoy, but not really have anything to work with. It's, it's decent stuff. It really is decent stuff. And having had some of their small batch stuff, their top and the higher end stuff is actually really, really good. So all in all, I can't fault it, to be perfectly honest. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Right, Quint, thank you for those three. Really appreciate them. Really nice, really impressive. Um, always good to have, uh, always good to go back to some that you haven't had for a number of years that you had this impression of. It's either really, really good or really, really bad. And um, fortunately, in this case, both of the ones that I'd had before and I really enjoyed, I still enjoy, which is always good. Um, so yeah, please do check out Well Aged Scotch on YouTube. Um, it's well worth watching his videos. He's trying to do something a little bit different in terms of kind of explanations behind things. Um, he's also got the biggest tasting glass in the world you will ever see. Um, so it's worth checking out even just for to try and see him sample some whiskey out of this massive glass. It's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, so three down. I will get cracking with editing and uh, do the first one because it needs to be up like five minutes ago. And I shall see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.